in terms of the, the appropriateness of us paying the, uh, paying the dues to the BSA. You know, I, it's hard to see how um, that I, it's hard to see the value of that to the school district. It's a professional organization. It's a private membership organization. It, it serves the superintendents, which I think is probably valuable. But I'm not sure it serves the taxpayers. So I'm, I, uh, and I think the same with the VPA dues, which we'll find in the principal's lines and the VPA conferences and things like that. I think if the principals or superintendent want to um, Join a professional organization that they, you know, they are compensated well enough that they can, they can do that um, on their own rather than the taxpayers be sending that up. I, I would submit that we get very little in return for that, and when we do need their services, we wind up paying the fees anyway. When they help train a superintendent, or if they help, uh, when they help the superintendent evaluation, same with the VSBA, we pay a healthy fee, and we actually there was a two hundred dollar fee in, in one of the. Uh, SU budgets for the to rent the or to lease the VSBA database for negotiations. They they we pay fees for their services, and I think that paying dues is. I think we need to just stop doing that. So I don't know if we can get a, a more specific accounting of what those things are because subscriptions. There's if it's valuable subscription to something, we want to keep that. But as far as the dues and conference fees and things like that, I'd like us to consider not including those. I will say that um, for <clears throat> uh, VSBA dues, uh, one thing that we will be using, and it's cyclical, <clears throat> is the for negotiations, they maintain a survey of all of the state contracts, and that's a very, very useful uh, data point. I think that's, what we just, that's what we just um, um, Bought a subscription to, isn't it? The database of all the contracts. Yeah, yeah, but if we're not if we're not members, I don't think we would be. Oh yeah, so they, they fee list fee the fees they right in their in their book. It, we, you know, they they're happy to take our money. You can do even it even if you're not a member. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they've come out with now in the last couple months they've approved a range of services, and so the price is different if you're buying a la carte versus uh, buying okay. the full <laughs> fixed price menu of services. So mm -hmm. Please click. And the superintendent evaluation comes through the, we, the superintendent evaluation process that we use was a VSBA dues mm -hmm. thing, not a Vermont right. superintendent. System. I just want to clarify. Right, but, I, yeah. but well, I'm you, not, I'm you did a training there, didn't you? I mean, how you learned to be a superintendent? Yes, I did, but I paid for that. As oh, that was person. that was you. Yeah, okay, I thought that was a service staff as well. But anyway, the, the the point is that both of those are particularly VSBA, but both those organizations are becoming more and more fee for service because of the the structures of the school districts have changed, and I think we just speed that process along by not paying those dues. We're not getting anything for it. Perhaps we should have a couple people take a look at kind of what we're spending money on and what the fee for service is and figure out what uh, what is the best savings for us with what we expect to be using <coughs> in the next year <laughs> of their services. So let me ask this. Um, the three Vernon went to start our meeting just so they can get things going here and I don't want to rush us but I guess long term how are we seeing this happen over the next couple weeks what are you have expecting you to need from our, us have you seen our um, our budget timeline yeah so maybe okay. that's something we should go over and yeah. just make sure everybody's aware of Does everybody when, you're, when you're hoping to see us it's also on the, on the website as well um, yeah, so um, what what we are looking for is um, uh, another uh, budget review next Monday, um, really to focus on those allocation methods. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and then if, if we don't get to something tonight that we had on our topics, you know, like um, food service, we just don't get to it we can pick it up on the 25th um, but the idea is that after reviewing special ed on on the 12th uh, the board would have the the entire budget at that point um, and um, the the objective would be to uh, take a vote and approve the SU board approve the budget on the 11th um, the, the uh, the, the reason for that timeline primarily is so that when the 
what it used to be all, all the other districts start their budget planning they've got a good baseline for some of those core services already um, and now it's it is Vernon and um, the SD that uh, you know would will benefit from those assumptions uh, and they the first draft for the SD is um, the next week uh, um, you see that as uh, December 18 on line 12. Okay, that's the first draft for the SD. And uh, for Vernon, we had a first draft, um, looks like uh, also on, on the 2nd um, of December. So, so you're looking for us to regroup next Monday and yeah. then the following Tuesday? Uh, is it is the um, December second Tuesday? Uh, December third is a Tuesday. Uh, we had December second. Oh. Let me Yeah, we have December second. It's a Monday. Or did, this says the third. Uh, is that an older calendar? Because we. Oh, did, I don't know. Yeah, here's the ones that we have on the website um, that do say. I can't pass that. Yeah. Here. Do say. Um, December 2nd. <coughs> so it's, it is the 2nd? Yeah, okay. yeah, I think that's uh, that might have been a very... This is the one I think you handed out at the SD meeting. Probably, okay. yeah, first, first version. Okay. Yeah. So can everybody meet the following two Mondays? <laughs> Come with little phones. December uh, the 25th and the second. So the, Monday the, the 25th second. of November yeah. and then December 2nd, Monday. Um, I can. They're all scheduled for a central office. Okay. Five, Time? Yes. Five. five. Everybody do five central office? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. I think five might be a little tough for me for the possibility of 530. Does that work? 530? Not a problem. Okay, so central office. Um, and then I guess my next question is, as we look all of these over, so this document is not going to change until you have salary and health benefits. Well, right. I think we want to talk about how we want to present that, given that it's public information. The two, the two formats are, um, you, we, we make an assumption and we, we load it in as we, we would under any normal budget in that we do a projected salary schedule and that filters through all of the positions and we make an assumption about the increase in health and we load that in. Okay. And then we go in and we, you know, we negotiate knowing that, um, uh, you know, to be fair labor practice, it, it needs to have some some reasonable context so we, we make that case you know in our discussion that's that's a traditional way of doing it when you when we're in the middle of negotiations and don't have a contract for that period the other way is uh, we the, you know the board comes to uh, an agreement on a reserve for increases in salary and benefits and you just put that as a single line item in the budget you know 400,000 reserved for salary and benefits. It goes into one line and it's just it's just a it's a reserve for whatever is um, negotiated. Um, both both approaches get you to the same place in that you set a tax rate that funds whatever you ultimately end up negotiating. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 big advantage of of putting a number uh, into a schedule and, and integrating it throughout the many documents, the many pages of documents, is that when you use that as a historical document and as a reference point, uh, you don't have to make this constant adjustment. Oh yeah, we went up 6%, 7% when you look at one period to a future period because the money wasn't in that box, it was somewhere else. That That's... <clears throat> an endless sort of source of confusion mm -hmm. <clears throat> for both public boards and um, 
uh, folks in the building. But we can talk about that at the next meeting. So then health benefits and salary aside, how does everybody feel about getting questions answered? And how, what's the most efficient and effective way if we all have a question about this line item? Typically our questions go to the chair and then <clears throat> they're organized and then, and then, you know, as long as they're not redundant, you know, okay. you, you filter out what, what seems to be, uh, you know, whatever the question is and then you send it along to me in, ad in advance and then okay. uh, I or and or Lyle um, can can respond. Okay, uh, so is everyone good with just emailing me anything you got? <laughs> mm -hmm. As detailed as possible and then I will gather everything up and hopefully send it off in a way that... Yeah, and then, and then of course we, and we then respond we in the meeting, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. just a quick clarification, Are the, um, is the grants part of this different than the one that we Got, I know the page numbers are different, but are there things have things changed since when we got an email? No. Okay, I, I, I'll just have to figure out what I why I don't understand. What I'm doing. Thanks. I do have um, your questions, you know, that from the email, so I can I can easily go go Look through. Not now, though. I'll send. I'll do what you said. Okay. Um, Gives me time to reconsider. Okay. <laughs> So, um, shall we go to the grant yeah. proposal? Okay, um, Paul, if we could, uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna turn to page eight. Uh, if you're just going with the, the document I handed out, it keeps on going from one to twenty-four. Page eight. If, if you're using your email document, it's the one that the title says um, "Regular Ed Grant Program" at the top. So, Paul, you right. So, so in order to sort out the grants, it's really helpful to look at again, look at the budget numbers and the very last set of numbers that are actually cut off. You'll see at the top of page eight, the first budget, uh, the first set of numbers is 1920. Right. That the way to to interpret that is look down at the bottom of that block of numbers. You'll see that's adult tech ed. Okay. So you have, always have to look down to the bottom to understand what's this block of numbers about, right? So I am most able to talk about um, some of the, the larger grants, specifically the three federal programs grants, Title I, Title IIA, Title IV, and then a separate tobacco uh, settlement grant. Um, and those are encountered first on page 9, 4250, is... Um, the Title I grant, and you'll see some changes there. One of the more obvious ones is moving from subgranting to individual schools uh, in the first five or six lines, uh, to or seven lines, to granting all in at the supervisory district level. Um, so the the tones are the same; they're just moved in a, in, a, in a different account number, and then the rest are follow a pattern that same pattern of. First talking about salaries, stipends, then talking about benefits, and then uh, travel, uh, <coughs> supplies, et cetera, uh, professional educational services right, right toward the end. Um, the lion's share of the shift uh, is, let's see, um, up in the overall, in general, uh, title I, the, the vast amount, uh, percentage of Title I is money that we send to individual schools to pay for academic support teachers. So part of our multi-tiered systems of support, we are funding at each of the schools uh, that are Title I schools, and that is all three of the Brat Town schools, Putney uh, and Guilford, not Dummerston and Vernon, uh, that's based on poverty percentages. Um, to those schools, we um, uh, send we grant subgrant money to pay for salaries for the for salaries for the academic support teachers, salary and benefit for academic support teachers, Birch and and some stipend money for district wide programs like the uh, summer academic support camp. Hardly any other money in Title I is spent on anything other than, than salary benefit stipends. 
Uh, the next, so you can look over uh, down through page nine. It ends in page, the middle of page 11. You see what the bottom line is, um, a relatively small percentage difference from uh, 20 to 21, but that's not accounting for any of the potential changes in salary. And because all, you know, there's so much salary uh, loaded into the salary and benefits, loaded into Title I, you'll see a, a shift there uh, subsequently when that's all sorted out. Uh, the next uh, block, 4570, is Title IV. That's a new grant program. By the way, I should say, Title I is specifically intended to be federal money provided to states, provided to individual schools for the purposes of improving education for low-income students. Um, for all of the schools in our district, we uh, are able to make, uh, to access what's called a school-wide plan, where we aren't individually identifying and providing specific services to particular individual students. Rather, the poverty percentage is high enough that it's vastly more effective to simply serve all of the students in the school. Right? So we're not making a distinction between students in poverty, students not in poverty. When we're providing those services, we're providing the services to any student that's, that's, that requires it. Okay. Um, the next grant, the 4570, is a relatively new federal grant. It's for well-rounded education, safe and healthy schools, and integration of technology. Those are the three target areas that are identified. Um, and so there's a mix of um, uh, strategies involved. Uh, some salary, um, that salary is part of my salary for science coaching. Uh, identifying science is one of these, the areas that we want to uh, provide additional support in science and social studies. Uh, there is a part of my time is, is spent being a science coach uh, to get more science happening in schools. Um, and some of the supplies budget is about providing for additional science equipment for, for schools. Um, there's also funds in place for uh, professional educational services for uh, technology integration support. Um, and there is, uh, let's see, garden coordinators is a new piece that we've added in. So, and uh, I will also say there's a number of um, professional development opportunities, materials opportunities for <laughs> independent schools that are also built into um, this budget, the Title IV and also 2A. Part of the deal with federal programs grant is grants is we have to share some of that wealth with the independent schools in our catchment area. Most often we send it, we spend it for professional development for those schools uh, or for materials and equipment that will support this well-rounded education or teacher professional development. Okay, so that Title IV ends on the sort of top part of page 13. Um, the 21st Century Schools Grant is a grant to BAMS um, that provides for, uh, at this point, it's funding uh, a portion of their BEANS after school program that's quite popular, uh, provides a lot of services to kids. Um, 4651 uh, starts on page 13. That's Title IIA. That's specifically designed to be professional development for uh, teachers. That's where we fund. Uh, some of our literacy coach, all of our math coach, all of the administrator coach, um, plus some professional development activities for both uh, our district schools and also, as I say, part of the independent schools. So again, the, the, um, the first piece is the subgrants, and then it's salary and stipends, and, uh, and then benefits, and then uh, some general supplies, employment, uh, contracted services, et cetera. And that ends on uh, down toward the bottom of page 15. Then uh, going into territory I'm less familiar with, 8920 is Medicaid. I want to talk about that. And EPSDT. And then Asian Studies. Uh, oh, sorry. The, I missed that. The tobacco grant, uh, I do oversee that grant. That's the 5555 five, five, five ending on uh, the middle of page 17. Um, 
Much of that is uh, we arrange a contract with the Brattleboro Area Prevention Coalition work in coordination with them to uh, provide some of the services that are required by the state for um, uh, 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 attaining the grant. Uh, part of that is work with youth groups at the high school, um, Our Voices Exposed, and at the middle school, the Vermont Kids Against Tobacco. Um, and we work in, in conjunction with the student assistance providers at the high school and middle, middle school to work with students who are maybe have a tobacco infraction or um, have uh, contacted the, the, the SAP because there are substance issues. Um, their uh, BAPC and the SAPs work really closely together to, to, to provide those services and to work with kids in those, in those schools. Um, Asian Studies is the middle of page 17 and down. And then... Uh, is that the direct instruction 1127, that Asian Studies? Asian Studies is uh, 5700, starts on, yes, but it is, it is that, that program. I think yes. Lyle can talk more, <laughs> more about that. Uh, the long-standing uh, program that we've had for, for Asian Studies language instruction. And then some smaller grants, uh, Vermont Education Health Initiative, VHI, um, worker, work, Workforce Investment, is WIB, is it Frank? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. And then uh, regional standards board. There's also that section there um, for social competencies and diversity mm -hmm. training, which is the um, school leadership teams from each of the schools. Mm -hmm. um, each school has a leadership team. We Sorry. go to Landmark College a couple times a year. Each one, each school leadership team looks at uh, the school's climate surveys. Uh, and then they work towards uh, improving school climate. As Frank mentioned, all of these, the grants are, we have this amount of money, we have a plan for spending it. If the amount varies, we have to vary what we spend. Um, we can't overspend on, on any of those. So it's what comes in should be what goes out. The, the, the um, Asian Studies is grants from private sources. What is yeah, it, it, it's in this group because it um, historically was nearly 100% from private, uh, the Freeman Foundation. Okay. But that has that is changing, and there is a local share um, through the uh, districts. And um, I don't know if you have an update on that, Lyle. I don't. We have applied again for a Freeman Foundation grant. Um, what I'm hearing is that the Freeman Foundation is more um, interested in, in funding things like uh, PBS, news, um, some colleges. We are one of the last uh, like school districts that they've been funded, so I don't know how long that will be available to us. So the, the high school has had a fairly significant line item uh, to fund the, uh, the program. Um, and and that, uh, that is a revenue source to the, so it's one of the few where there is now local money coming in. And because of that, it probably should come out of this group because it's no longer. <coughs> the group of uh, activity in here is intended to be basically self-funded. So if it's no longer the case, then we need to restructure. Would that happen this year, or we're still waiting to hear? Yeah, we need to know. So that might happen. Yeah, yeah okay. it could. It could happen uh, for fiscal year 21. I, I would expect we'll hear from the Freedom Foundation fairly soon. Okay. Frank, who does the where does the where do the web funds come from? It's a state uh, agency, and yeah. um, and um, they that's been used to get the uh, the uh, nursing program integrated with the collegiate high school program. So we've been um, working with Paul Cohen to develop uh, co-op opportunities for kids at, at different medical um, uh, facilities. Can we get more money? <laughs> it's been about the same for many years, uh, but it, but but what what little bit is there? That sixteen thousand, I think, has really been very well used. Oh, I oh, I was looking at the total amount the bottom. Yeah, yeah. The um, it's in the um, you had a question on um, 
the uh, social company to see oh, the diversity, diversity training. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that's what the Diana that Wally has been doing. Did did you already describe that? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, the, yeah. The yeah I know some of her. I just didn't know who that was. Yeah. Yeah. Are they expanding that program? Is that why that's we're going to look at that. Um, we're thinking that there, there may be uh, some redundancies there, and th that in terms of that line item up fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're you know what's conspicuous is if you look at FY twenty fifteen eight seventy nine, it's the same amount that's up. So, okay. So that tells me that uh, we we got to double check the revenue source and make sure that it's something didn't get. Yeah, yeah that double, maybe okay. something got. Uh, duplicated there. Okay. I, I don't know if you know. I, I, that seems up too much, but I do know that we are up some because we're trying to work a little bit more with the community justice um, and restorative justice um, so that they come in and do some training with each of the school leadership teams around restorative justice practices. So I, we have put some money in the budget for that Great. as well. Okay. That's it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, David, I think we we covered all the questions on your email, unless yeah. there's something. No, I think remember. Yeah. Okay. I just I didn't have um, uh, 7, 16 and seventeen in the packet. That page didn't get stapled on, so I couldn't find it. I was going crazy, so I finally pulled it on my screen. No, okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. But go through again, David, and if there's anything oh, no, you don't feel like things. we've got it. Yeah. Send everybody send me questions, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll do this again next Monday and see yeah. where we're at. Shall we spend a little, a, a little bit on food service, and then you can decide oh, yeah. um, sure. if you want to. No, I forgot that there was. Yeah. Because that one I do not understand. Okay. <laughs> well, here we go. Um, understandable why you um, don't understand um, because of the way. Again, the state has kind of facilitated the, the transitions. Um, okay, so food service. <clears throat> um, let's see, where does that start? On your document, it should start on page 20. 20, yep. So I think I know the answer that Academy is so large because they do all the food prep for Oak Grove and the Green Street. Yes, is that the case? They, they do do that, but but it the um, the volume also reflects that they are you know three times larger than Oak Grove and okay. nearly you know you know a third larger than um, Green Street. But yeah, so um, but the the cost there the one thousand and one. Uh, and being in a district wide, you see the 51 on that where it's oh, 452,000 yeah. dollars. Yeah, it's it's important to recognize that when you go from the 11, see this is a good illustration of our our chart here. Um, the third sequence of numbers is 11, and it, yeah. it starts out that way, and then it changes to a 51. Okay. That's where you're no longer just serving um, academy school. Now you're serving academy, uh, Oak Grove, and Green, and Green Street. Street. So okay. you're you're right about the 450 yeah. being all three schools. Okay. Um, so the community eligibility program has been doing very well. Uh, we've remained eligible. It's good for four years. We've got another year to go. Um, and, and the reason why it's so successful, uh, not, not only does the, the specification that went out to bid require a very specific set of nutritional guidelines, uh, it's the fact that the Brattleboro community uh, qualifies for um, the high poverty uh, subsidy. Um, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, the way you look at it, none of the other communities qualify. Mm -hmm. However, there's there's a there's something called provision two, um, community eligibility provision is what Brattleboro Town uses, but provision two is um, where y you have feeder. 
town like Brattleboro going to the high school where you know that's the majority of the population so um, the community over half of the community in Brattleboro Union High School is are not accustomed to filing the application for uh, the federal food um, program support and um, high schools across the state and across the country families are reluctant to participate in that application process so it, 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 it would seem logical that you'd, you'd be very close to qualifying at the high school, but because families don't take advantage of the program, um, we don't. So, as an alternative to just saying, well, okay, we're going to have um, those kids that parents don't participate pay for those meals, um, and then the few that do get the uh, free lunch, um, uh, BOHS board approved provision two uh, a couple of years ago which does the same thing as the community eligibility program in that it um, everybody eats free but it's a much higher cost to the district for Brattleboro town school district the, 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 the local budget was subsidizing about 50,000 on you can see on uh, 530 five thousand dollar budget of spending that's you know about ten percent um the high school will have to subsidize their similar uh volume of five hundred thousand we can flip to the high school which is um, a couple more pages down we go to this nice sheet here just if you want to find what the high school code is and it's 1040 so when you get to the 1040 it happens to be the second batch of of numbers you see it's 510,000 it's actually a little less but the high school subsidy w was more like 25 percent not 10 percent and that's because the loss of the revenue from the kids that would pay it goes away nobody pays and that is replaced by um, the uh, you know the school budget <clears throat> so there's a much higher subsidy and you're not looking at revenues, you're just looking at operating costs, right? We, we have to develop the revenue, and we typically go over that um, at the last meeting for all of the programs. First, we have to look at costs, because that develops a lot of the revenues. Then we have to talk about how we assess costs, and then I can go through the final, and here's how the revenues come back to make this a break-even budget. So, um, uh, not, not, a, not a significant change in cost, though. Um, we do anticipate the bid for cafe services to continue to go up about 3%. Um, so those uh, costs are in there in some, in some of the programs. Um, but in each, each site, you know, Dummerston, Guilford, each site on page 2 and then um, page 3 of that food service group, Putney, Vernon, um, you know, these are, these are pretty stable programs with a pretty predictable cost because most of it is, is a contracted service. Um, and um, in general, um, I have not, you know, I don't hear about, uh, um, you know, lots of uh, concerns there's always room for improvement we know that and, and, and you're never going to make everybody happy so there's always work being done on menu and um, on uh, quality but um, programs seem to be doing pretty well pretty stable the big change in the food service group is in the Putney uh, presentation of, of data here on page three of the food service Group and it's um, Putney is uh, district number one two three four, which is on page twenty two in your package. And the big difference is that Putney Putney was not fully integrated in the supervisory union in the prior year. The only part that was in the supervisory union was the pass through money that the state would send to the supervisory union, which is their share of the free and reduced lunch reimbursements. And then the supervisor union would just kind of check back to the Putney School District and they would um, incur the rest of those expenses. But 
Now we have the full the full operating cost of 239,000 instead of just uh, 87,000 pass through revenue. Um, so that's um, that's why that is up so much. And um, what we will look at um, relatively soon is well, what are, what are the revenue sources to, to fund that? And Putney has also been contributing a, a higher percentage of total operations than the other schools generally. Um, it's been, it started out 45,000, but I think it came down a little bit. Putney's also tried to expand their services to some of the, some catering uh, groups, because from their point of view, a higher volume is, covers their fixed costs and allows the program to be more financially viable. So if I can say that, I mean, I, I, seeing the, the 50, the difference between 11 and 51, the 3.9 percent and 3.6 percent uh, increases in Academy and, and Broadway make sense because those are for the whole, you know, for a much larger. It's not just those two places, but why is why the increase in uh, the food service management fees? Why did why are we paying well 17,000 in the BUHS section? It's not just BUHS, I understand. And then uh, seventeen thousand in the, the academy section. Why did the management fees go up so much? So that, that's um, part of the bid process. Um, do you have a specific one? Yeah. Um, uh, Thirty-one hundred five seven one zero. Forty-two hundred five four. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is. I mean, you see, you see the three percent on page twenty there. You know, the four hundred thirty-nine thousand is going to four hundred fifty-two thousand. That's. For um, Academy, that's thirteen thousand two hundred. That's a three percent. That's a three percent increase. In the yeah, that, that's okay. what we're projecting. But right. you know, it will be. Yeah. It, it is a one it's year bid yeah. every year, and um, they request the renewal, and the state reviews their request. And, um, uh, and but you know, I don't know if you recall the the bid that was just awarded. Um, this is the second year of their their bid, and. Um, you know, they did, they did um, compete with the Abbey Food Services and mm -hmm. Fitzboyd, and uh, they actually were not the low bidder, but when um, principals, there was a um, evaluation team, um, when they compared notes about the quality of the food um, yeah. and the response of the um, staff to address concerns about the, you know, any, any part of the program, um, the consensus was to retain capital Yeah, they're, they're responsive. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yep. Anything else? Other questions? Sean, how are we doing? Good. You're, yeah, you're our good. expert in the room. We get to go. <laughs> I'm <How> sorry. We <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the one, one last thing, I hate to make it our, our wrap up, but. Um, but uh, I gotta believe it's no surprise to you that the biggest uh, group, service group in the central office, is special ed, and and we are we are seeing very large increases in special ed services. Unfortunately, it, it, it relates to the. I'm sure you've heard it. It's your local um, districts in your local schools. It's the. Um, attention to addressing the behavior issues that are throughout all of our communities they're throughout vermont we're hearing this across the state the need for behavior intervention the the, the increase in outside placements to um you know Bravo retreat and kennel farm and these um, specialized programs um we've gone from a million dollar outside placement budget to two and a half million is where we're at now that was not budgeted a lot of this is when I say not budgeted for this year, so we're heading for a deficit this year, and it's it um, a lot of it is is um, families moving in as well. So isn't there a revenue stream for that? So for some there are, but a lot no. They're re they're new residents of the Bradboro area. Um, so for those there's no there's no um, you know new revenue other other than the standard state aid. Um, a little bit of a good news on that is that the commissioner or the secretary of education rescinded his earlier uh, sort of edict that they weren't going to pay for the first like fifty thousand dollars of 
these outside placements. They were going to call that regular ed. Uh, is ignoring the argument that, well, if we could educate these students in the regular ed environment, we would do that. And they're in these placements because, and uh, in a, uh, the VSA, the VSBA, um, engaged folks in Washington to say, uh, I think you better review what Vermont's trying to do to special ed um, funding. And uh, I, I think that made a difference. And, and uh, he rescinded his uh, attempt to essentially shift a lot of costs to the local tax rate. So maybe back to that point, David, you know, there's, there's a very significant uh, impact, you know, of being getting the benefit of a VSBA, VSA um, initiative. You know, you put it in a context of a $10,000 dues, you know, we potentially, we were, we were talking about losing potentially, you know, uh, 500,000, 600,000 in, in state funding. It looks like the, the groups have prevailed so far. <laughs> So that's to come, but but uh, we'll have a little bit more, maybe maybe a, a document for you. But but we've scheduled Shelley and Marisa to come in and talk to you on December second. Answer your questions. Okay, so that will be focused on special ed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll send you a draft as soon as we can put it together. They're required to send a something called a service plan to the agency of ed in. October 15, and they've done that, and that's why we have these preliminary uh, estimates. But they're not they're not codified yet into the into the system. They're coming December 2nd. Yes. Yeah. Anybody special next week? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just us. <laughs> 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 that could come and report out. <laughs> yeah. Same thing again. Okay. Any other questions for us? Anyone on the budget? I, I, I'll just reiterate that uh, hopefully we'll have a little more um, discussion on what is a reasonable assumption. We probably want to go into executive session for that. Okay. And but if you could think about that, I will I will uh, bring together data that um, that I can find available that would suggest that it would be a reasonable um, you know assumption, and then we, we it will be helpful, obviously, to us if we had consensus on that because then I can integrate it into the and it, you know it changes everything so would that be negotiations or contracts executive session yeah yeah okay. and keep in mind the supervisory union is the legal yeah. responsible party for negotiations okay it gets ratified by the district but it's supposed to be coordinated by the SU. All right, so I think the last thing on our agenda is the executive session. Yeah, we'd like to move, uh, move into executive session to discuss our uh, negotiations. Could you invite the superintendent to join us? YBSA 313. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Nerd uh, talk. Well, <laughs> Nerd talk. Well. Public knowledge would be uh, the, the district at the Sudan. Are we inviting Frank as well? You, or just Mark? Yeah, you're welcome to come. Okay. Yeah, you should stay. I'm not a voting member at all. I'm not voting member. Yeah. Can you invite Sean? Oh, we can. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, board member Murphy. Oh, he's negotiation. That's right. All right. So we're inviting Sean as well. And there's not going to be a decision afterwards, I don't think. Yes, there, yes. So we would not be making a decision. You can have